In this video, you will learn how to add custom interfaces to tools like SmartSuite, Airtable, and Google Sheets to provide users such as customers or employees with the data and tasks that they need to see and complete. Check it out. Welcome back to the channel. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Zach Stevenson. I'm a business process and no code consultant. If you need help streamlining or automating any of your business processes, you can visit our, our website, interdevsolutions.com, or you can click the link in the description below to book a free consult. A couple things to get started. You will need a smart suite and a no local account. As mentioned, you can also repeat this process using tools like Airtable and Google Sheets. I'm going to use smart suite for this tutorial. I'm also going to base this off of an order management system as an example use case. There is links in the description below for both SmartSuite and NoLoco to create your free accounts to get started. Once you have an account, you'll need to create or go to your order management solution within SmartSuite or Airtable or wherever you have that type of data. In this case, I already have the solution built out. I have my orders, I have order items, these link to these orders. I have customers, customers link to orders as well. And then I have products and products here link to the actual order line items. So each group that you see here, this is line items that belong to this particular order. And these are line items that belong to this particular order, which in turn link to the actual products table. Just really high level review here. And it's a very simple use case. Chances are you're going to have a lot more data that you're going to want to track. If we navigate over to Noloco, we can click this new app and we are going to bring in the smart suite data. So we can select it, name it, whatever we want. And then from here, we'll be able to choose our workspace and our solution. Once we've selected our workspace, we can go down to the solution here. And this is just simply called order management. I'll just leave the name as order management and we can move on to the next step. Once I select next, it's going to connect to smart suite. It's going to find and analyze all of that table data, and it's going to try to use AI to build and start off our actual app before we dive in and customize the solution. Now it's been completed. I can click next and the application build window will start to populate here. No local recently introduced a new layout. They spent a lot of time redesigning and figuring out the most optimal workflow and layout for development. We can see that NoLoco using AI took a stab at building some of these interfaces for us. We've got our orders, order items, customers, and products. They're going to take a little bit of work to get them to where we want them to be, but it's actually not too bad. The orders table was developed in a board type view. I don't mind this. It's okay for our use case here. I will just leave it as is. We can go into the fields option in the top right here. We can probably hide some of this data. I will leave the order ID, the status we can hide because we have it in the board view at the top here. We'll just toggle that off and hide it. I do want to see the customer. I want to see the order date and I want to see the total. I am going to hide this link here. These are the link to order items collection. So I can just toggle that off as well. At a high level, this gives us the information that we need to see as in the order ID, the customer, the order date, and the total for the order. That gives us a pretty good start. We have a list of all our order items here. We probably don't need this. Uh, depending on your particular workflow, you may want to set something like this up. If all of these items were related to different tasks that you would need to assign to somebody, then you could probably leave this item list. I'm going to delete it because we're going to be able to view the items within the orders when we click into them and actually see which items apply to the specific order. I'm going to go ahead and remove that. We've got a customer list here. I'm going to add that as a grid view. I've changed the layout to a grid. I'm going to go into the fields here and we're going to hide things like the link to order collection. And I will probably just leave it so that we have the customer name, the contact name, the email, and the phone number. And then if we want to see more data, we can click into it and we have this to work with here. I'm not going to dive into the customer's view all that much. Uh, you could clean this up or add the different orders. For example, if we go over to here, the record view. 
I'm going to add a new collection. And that collection is going to point to the actual orders that are associated with that customer. Within the customer view, when we actually click into the customer, I've added a collection here and we can go down to general. We'll select the list type. We'll select orders and we can go over options and we will click this link to orders collection. This way it will filter all the orders by the orders that are actually related to this customer. And then if we go into fields here, we can toggle on the different fields that we want to see so that when we click into the customer, we can see the customer information, and then we can actually see the orders related to that customer. There's this edit button here, so we can sign those to different fields. If we click in, click edit, then we're actually able to edit the actual customer data right in line. And a similar thing would be true for all of our products. If we go into the fields here, we could toggle that off, just leave product name and price. And then if we click into it, we'll be able to see more information on this specific product and then we could go in and click edit if we wanted to change the price most of the time that i want to focus on is into this actual order here over here we can click new orders and then we can edit and set up our order form so fields i'm going to turn off this order id as it's automatically generated back in smart suite status i'll turn that off as well we really only need the customer that it's going to be assigned to and the order date. I'll click done. I can select my customer from the list and I can just select the date. I will say the order date is today. I click save. Now that I've clicked save, it's opened up my orders page. If I go back to orders, we can see here that it created it. When I click into it, I can view the information here so I can see the different statuses across the top, what status it's currently in, received and processed, ready for pickup and paid. So I'll just leave it as received. We've got the order date and time here. We have the order total, which is blank currently because we have not actually assigned any items to it. And then down here, we can see some additional information. I probably want to edit this page a little bit. I'll just click this button to edit it. And I'm going to remove the customer here and I'm going to remove this information as well. What I do want to do is add a new collection. And the collection is going to point to order items and we can do link to order items. And the fields that we want to show is quantity, by products, by total. Now that we have this collection set up, we can go in, click this new order items. So now we are actually adding an item to the particular order and we'll click fields here. We can hide this item ID. We can hide the link to orders. We'll leave the quantity and the products available here. So if I add two, I can select from the drop down the list of our products here. I'll just select this laser cutting machine. I can click save. We can see that the item did get added. We've got a quantity of two laser cutting machine, and it shows us the price and the total. If we go into the new order items, this link to orders does need to be there. So make sure that's turned on so that it knows to link to that particular order. If you go in, you can hide that if we want and do a hidden value and just connect the order to it. But we'll just leave that as a valid input because we will not be able to change that anyway. So that way it gives us a little bit of reference to the order that we're adding to just for a reminder. One, I can click this robot arm assembly click save, you'll see within a moment here, it will get added in line here as well. So if I click done, we refresh this page. And now you can see that it's pulled in the total based off of the items that have been associated to this order. If I navigate back to smart suite, we can see all the orders in line here. So this is the new order that I just created from no loco. It's rolled up the total. If I go over to order items, we can see this new order assigned the line items accordingly with the values correctly entered so that you can see that there is a two-way sync from these solutions. If you only want certain users to be able to view specific information, you can add those types of filters in line and give the different users a login method that is associated with those types of filters. For example, if you want to build a client portal on top of this so that instead when they click 
orders or some form of order that they will only see the orders that have been assigned to their particular customer account. That way they don't see all the orders within your pipeline. And then that way they can click into their order, see the status, where things are at, a reminder of the items that they actually ordered. You could connect invoices to it. And that way you can create a customer portal that is specific to that customer and only the information and elements that are directly related to that. This is just a really high level use case of using no logo to build on top of smart suite and Airtable, Google sheets to be able to bring in the data in a view that makes sense for the end user, whether it's employees in different apartments, like accounting or on the actual floor who are building the products, or if it's a customer portal so that they can only view the information that's related to their specific account gives you a lot of flexibility. I'm sure you can imagine the types of use cases that this would be applicable for. And the great thing is no logo makes it really easy to get started. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit that subscribe button for more tutorials in the future.